our Prophet وسلم, came into this world over 1400 years ago and he brought a message from our Creator to complete the prophetic messages. Alhamdulillah, we have to marvel at the miracle of this religion because 1400 years later, if one of the Sahaba came here, he might be surprised that we're speaking in English, but he would see the Sunnah of his Prophet ﷺ being implemented in California. He would see coming out, which is the Sunnah of the uh, Eid prayer, coming out to an open space. He would see the ranks, he would see the women where they are and the men where they are. And this is the Sunnah of our Prophet ﷺ, not in any way to oppress the women, but just for the order of the dunya. Alhamdulillah, he said the best of the ranks are the first ranks for the men and the best of the ranks are the last ranks for the women. This is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the prayer, the reciter recited with the tajweed that the Prophet ﷺ taught to his sahaba. They said when he recited the Qur'an, كان يمد في قراءته مدة He recited in that way with the mudud, these elongations, because they have an effect on the heart. This is not the kalam al-bashar. The way people talk is different from the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to hear His words. And that's why they're recited the way they are. Alhamdulillah, fasting is a great blessing from Allah. Now we know the benefits of what they call intermittent fasting. But we didn't need to hear it from the doctors because we got it from our Lord who created our bodies and He knows what's good for our bodies and what's bad for our bodies. The Prophet ﷺ said, Sumu tasahu, fast and become healthier. Sumu tasahu. And then He gave us these Eids. Eid is from a word in Arabic, Ada Ya'udu. It comes back, it's the after turning. And our religion made the Eids for each of the five pillars. The Eid of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah is every day of your life. It's every day of your life. As long as you're here in this dunya, every day is an Eid because you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu Muhammad Rasulullah. He made the Eid of your prayer Friday. Every Friday is an Eid for your five prayers. He made an Eid for Zakat when the completion of the year of the wealth comes and you pay your Zakat, it's an Eid. He made an Eid for the Hajj. So when, you, uh, when, when they complete the Hajj, we all celebrate because a group did the Far Kifaya Anna. They, they fulfilled that obligation for all of us. So these are the Ayat of our Deen. Their days of rejoice, the Prophet ﷺ said, Ayamu Eid, Ayamu Dhikrin wa Shukrin wa Akrin wa Shurbin. These are days of gratitude and of eating and drinking also. Remembering Allah, but eating and drinking. And we have to remember, we're living in an age of luxury. Now they're saying, oh, uh, there's going to be food shortages. There's not going to food. We waste half the food. According to the UN, half the food produced on this planet is thrown away. So there's no food shortages. There's just ingratitude. And when there's ingratitude, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constricts the people. If you're grateful, I'll give you more. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has given a likeness of a city, and that was Mecca, because they had provision from all over. People came from all over to visit Mecca, and they brought with them their goods and their services from all over. But when the Prophet came, they rejected him. They showed ingratitude for the blessing of Allah, and so Allah caused them, they went into drought. And they actually had food shortages in Mecca. After being so 
filled with the blessings. So this is one of the tragedies of ingratitude. And this is why our Prophet ﷺ said, Arba'un min hunna faqad dunya. There's four things that whoever's given these four things is given the good of this world. And then he said, Qalban shakira, a grateful heart. Qalban shakira, wudisan and dhakira. And a tongue that remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and that emanates from the gratitude of the heart. That's why he began with the, the grateful heart. Because everything after that comes from a grateful heart. Qalban shakiran, wudisan and dhakiran. وَبَدَدْ وَبَدَنًا صَابِرًا عَلَى الْبَلَاء And a body that's patient with the tribulations. A body that's patient with the tribulations. وَزَوْجَةً لَا تَبْغِيهِ خَوْنًا فِي نَفْسِهَا وَلَا مَالِهِ And a virtuous spouse. A virtuous spouse. If you have those four, you've been given all of the good of the dunya. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ أَصْبَحَ مُعَافًا فِي بَدْنِهِ آمِنًا فِي سِرْبِهِ لَهُ قُوتُ يَوْمِهِ فَكَأَنَّ مَحِيزَتْ لَهُ الدُّنْيَا بِحَذَافِرِهَا أو كما قال Whoever wakes up and I first heard this uh, hadith in Medina I was just on a prayer rug that said Medina travel so it, I, like a magic carpet I felt like going to Medina I first heard this from Sheikh Muhammad al-Hajjar, the scholar from Syria. We were, I was walking out and I saw him. He looked a beautiful man, had a beautiful face. And I walked up to him and I said to him, Assalamu uh, alaikum, Sheikh. I didn't know him. And he gave me his book. He had a book with him that he'd written and he gave me the book. And then he said to me, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And we were in front of the Prophet's masjid. He said, Qala Rasulullah. And then he quoted that hadith. And I memorized it from that day. It's a beautiful hadith. Whoever wakes up healthy in his body, healthy in his body, secure. He feels secure, like he's not worried about somebody bulldozing his house or dropping a bomb over his head. And he has enough food for that day, not for the year, just for that day. It's as if he has come into the day having all of the world and what's in it. Subhanallah. It's amazing. So our Prophet ﷺ gave us this guidance. And one of the most one of the greatest blessings of this religion is this month that we just finished. We were waiting with great expectation for the month, and now it's gone. It's as if it was like a blink of an eye. The fasting was facilitated, we didn't feel the hunger. It's amazing. People, the, the people outside of our faith, are, what? You're fasting a whole month? How do you do that? They don't know that Allah facilitates these things for us. But this is a month of returning to the Qur'an. And it's a month to remind us that we should be with the Qur'an for the whole year. The Prophet ﷺ did not, he was the most generous of men. And in Ramadan, he was even more generous. But he was, his practice was constant. His, he, his tahajjud was the same in Ramadan as it was in any other month. The Prophet ﷺ lived his life as if every day was Laylatul Qadr. And in fact, there was a, an opinion, one of the Andalusian sheikhs said, you should expect Laylatul Qadr any night of the year. So this month is a month of returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ibn Qayyim al said, Yusuf had 11 brothers and they envied him and they abused him and yet he forgave them. He said Ramadan is like Sayyidina Yusuf. It's the 12th month and it forgives the other 11 months. This is a great blessing. Allah forgives us for our sins. The Prophet said one man he came and he said, Ya Rasulullah, Allah, I kissed a woman that wasn't, I wasn't married to him. Qubla. This is called Laman. Don't do it. But the Prophet ﷺ said that if you, then the, the verse was revealed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives the sayyat with these actions like fasting and prayer. All these things remove 
the sagair. He said, as long as you don't do a major sin, and if you do a major sin, and may Allah forgive anyone, uh, inshallah nobody here, you're all good, mu'minun, but there's people that do major sins, the kabair. Anyone that does a major sin, they have to make tawbah. The other sins, we should make tawbah for them, but they're removed by these actions like fasting. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man sama Ramadan iman and wahtisaban, ghufira lahu, ma ta'akhara min dan bihi. Whoever fasts Ramadan with iman, they believe in it. They're doing it because they believe in it. And they believe that Allah will reward them for it. He said they will be forgiven their past sins, meaning all of the lemon. So today is like your mother brought you into the world. We finished it. And the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, now this is the day of fitr. It's called Eid al-Fitr. So this is a day of joy. Why? Because we completed 29, some people 30 days of fasting. That's the joy. It's not the food. It's that we completed this act of ibadah. Our Prophet ﷺ said in an, um, a, a beautiful hadith, he said, Badru bil amali sab'an, preempt with virtuous deeds seven things. These seven are coming. La mahalata, they are coming. Faqran munsiya, a poverty that makes you forget everything else. When And some people here, I know, you've been in situations where you've been impoverished, where you lost all of your uh, wealth, where everything went south. This happens to people. The Prophet ﷺ said, when that happens, you can't think of anything. Because that's what faqr is. It puts you in a state of desperation. That's why we're called fuqara with Allah. Because we're supposed to be desperate with Allah. We need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said, faqr al munsiyan aw ghin al mutghiyya. Or wealth that makes you forget and you become excessive. Ghin al mutghiyya. Verily, man goes to extremes when he feels that he's rich. In other words, he deems himself rich. We're not, we're poor, no matter how much money you have. Elon Musk is faqir and Allah. Bill Gates is faqir and Allah. They're fuqara, but they don't know it because their wealth makes them think that they're independent. But the smallest microbe can come and reduce that human being to nothing. The whole world was seized by COVID. The whole world was seized by COVID. Look at how one microbe that you can't, you have to have an electron microscope to even see this thing. And yet it reduced the whole world to a state of anxiety and fear. SubhanAllah. In France, they banned the burqa and Allah made them all wear a burqa. It's amazing. They had to cover their faces. Subhanallah. Ghinan mutghiyan. Aw maradan mufsida. Or a disease that disables you. It disables you. Maradan mufsida. Aw maut al mujhiza. Or a sudden death. Because Allah can take us at any time. A dunya is ghillun zairun kama qal al ulama. In many, many uh, books, they talk about this. The, the, the nature of dunya is like a, a, sh a shadow that will disappear when the sun goes down. It's a temporal thing. We're in a temporal world. So the Prophet ﷺ said, sudden death is coming. Badru bil amali. Preempt these things. Preempt the sudden death because it's coming. Death will come to people when they're unexpected. Some people are fortunate that they're given time. They get sick. And then they have time to make toba to do all these things. But there's other people they don't. It just comes to them suddenly. They drop dead. They have a heart attack. One of the signs of the end of time, the Prophet ﷺ said, is sudden death. This is a hadith sahih. Mawt al sudden death. People used to die natural deaths. Now they just drop dead. They're a per physician in a... a, a a, uh, an athlete in perfect physical condition on the soccer field and he just drops dead. YouTube's filled with videos of these people. A basketball player in perfect physical condition and he just drops dead. Sudden death. None of us knows when the time's come. The Prophet said also Fadid, that there would be strokes. 
he, he said it's one of the signs of the latter days, strokes. He also said bawasia was a sign of the latter days, hemorrhoids, because people have sedentary lifestyles. They no longer get up and walk around. These are all signs of the latter day. And then he said, oh, with the jab. With the jab of sharru ghaib yuntada, or the Antichrist. The Prophet ﷺ said that one of the signs of the latter days is the Antichrist is no longer mentioned al manabir When was the last time you heard any Imam mention the Dajjal? Ask yourselves, when do they mention the Dajjal? And all the signs of the Dajjal are here. The Dajjal is what takes people away. It's materialism. He has one eye. In other words, no depth perception. Everything is two-dimensional. He has no depth perception. He fools people. He gives them a jannah that's a knob, materialism. You get into it and you're in hell. And he gives them a nar, zuhud, all these things that the Prophet told us to practice. And they say, oh, what, you're depriving yourself of food for a whole month? Why would you do that? That sounds like hell. But for people that experience it, it's a jannah. So this is what the Dajjal does, the Antichrist. Why is the Antichrist? The way of Zuhd is the way of Isa. Our Prophet was the balanced, he was the most balanced of Prophets. So he had Zuhd as an option, but people, he also let people enjoy uh, their worldly things as long as they paid their zakat and fulfilled their obligations. Or he said, oh, sa'atu wa sa'atu adha wa amar. Or the hour, the hour is coming. And the hour is more bitter and more painful. The hour, and the hour are three according to the ulama. There's what's called sa'atul sughra, which is each one of us has a sa'a, which is the end of our lives. We have telomeres on our cells that determine how long our cells will last. And people will come to an end. We're like batteries. We don't know where we are. You know, you have these cell phones and they're full battery, like that's your lifespan. But then one third, two third, three, and then it goes on red. Where are you? We don't know. We don't know where we are on the battery. Then it starts blinking and then it just dies. And this is what Allah has made. This is his sunnah. Kataba ala ibn Adam al mawt He decreed for us death. And on the Yom Qiyamah, death comes as a ram. Death thou shalt be no more. As the poet said, Yudbah al mawt Death will be sacrifice on the day of judgment. As a ram, personified as a ram, yudbah. Death be not proud. Death comes to an end. People think these things now are fairy tales. Allah warns us about thinking they're asafir al awwaleen, the myths of the ancients. These are the things all the prophets brought. They came with the same message, all of them. Show me who didn't talk about a day of judgment. Even Socrates talks about a day of judgment. Even Socrates talks about a day of judgment. Everyone will have a reckoning. There's no free lunch, as they say. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah for the blessing of this religion. Every day we have a chance to make tawbah. Read in the Quran all of the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemns he always finishes those verses with إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَأَصْلَحُوا Except those who make tawbah. He says that about the thieves. He says that about the adulterers. He says that about the, the, the people that uh, are libelous and slander other people. He says that about the قُطَعَ turuq, About the brigands on, who armed robbery. He says that he's going to punish them unless they make tawbah. So, Tawbah is open to everybody. Whatever your sin is, as the great Mawlana said, come, keep coming, just come again. Come back to this religion. Whatever your sin is, just come back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a merciful God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful for those who show mercy. He's merciful for those who make tawbah. He's merciful for those who repent to Him and turn to Him. But Allah is shadeed al-iqab. He is muntaqim. These are his attributes. He is a merciful God, but he is merciful for those who show mercy. 
So be amongst those who show mercy to others. The merciful, those who show mercy, the merciful will show mercy to them. Have mercy on all the people in the earth. And Imam Madik said, even when you fight a just war, it's out of mercy, it's not a punishment. Malik is unique in saying that. He said, al jihad rahmatun, because you're stopping people from accruing more and more sin. So even that is a mercy. The qisas are a mercy. The qisas are a mercy. The, the, the lex talionis, this is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What I can fit qisas, yahya. There's nothing in this religion to be ashamed of. There's nothing in this religion to be ashamed of. There's nothing for Muslims to feel ashamed about. Our Prophet never said anything that's embarrassing. He never said anything that is embarrassing. Look at his words. It's amazing. And this Quran, this extraordinary book that Allah has given us. Don't let Ramadan, don't wait until the next Ramadan, which you don't know that whether you'll get it or not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the, uh, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَرَى كُلُّ أُمَّةٍ جَاثِيَةٍ كُلُّ أُمَّةٍ تُدْعَى إِلَى كِتَابِهَا You will see every ummah on the Day of Judgment bent down, kneeling down, jathiyah. Each one will be called to their book. Today you will be rewarded for what you have done in this dunya. This is our book. It speaks the truth. This book speaks the truth. We are recording everything that you're doing. Everything that you're doing is recorded. Though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Fusilat, at the end of Surah Fusilat, He said, he, he is going to show his signs on the self, in the self and on the horizon. What is the horizon? It's the meeting place between the heavens and the earth. What is the self? It's the meeting place between the heavens and the earth. It's the joining of the material and the physical. It's the joining of the angelic and the bestial. He says in this ayah, he will show the signs until it becomes clear to them that what he says is true. Allah says he's recording everything. Now we have all of your lives with these cell phones. You, what these corporations know about you is unbelievable. They know what you bought yesterday in the store. They know the telephone calls you made. They know how much money you make. They know where you, just walking around with this thing, they know where you were all day long. Every single spot, and the police pull these things up. Wherever you go, there's videos recording every act you do. You go into a store and there's a video. Somebody robs the store and then they put it up on YouTube and you can see the man robbing the store. Subhanallah, ma'akum kayfa ta'kumun. Who would have thought that every action now is recorded in this day and age? And Allah tells us he's recording everything. It's all recorded. And even uh, the great Imam al awzai said, on the day of judgment, there's something, it's called Yawm al -ard, the day of when, when, when it's revealed, the Ard, the Arad alayhi ya'ridu, is to show somebody, to, to display something. It's the day of display. He said every moment will have to, sit, every human being will have to sit and watch his entire life. Watch his entire life. It's all recorded. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna kunna We were recording everything that you were doing. There's nothing that will be hidden except, except. And this is in, in the dunya, you have something called Sony Pro Cut. This, this is what, if you, you can buy this, and then when you have a recording, you can just make cuts, you edit it, you can take it out. They, people do this all the time, they edit, what they recorded. Our editing system, our Allah Pro Cut is Toba. If you want to edit your life, make Toba. Make Toba for those things that you've done that you're ashamed of. Ask Allah for forgiveness. 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, He says, Yawma tara al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat Yasa'a nuruhum bayna aydihim wa bi'aymanihim you will see on that day the believers. These are the believers. Men and women. And this is the only book from the world religions that has men and women. You show me any other book in which men and women are put on equal status other than the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Show me any book. The Hindu scriptures, the Buddhist scriptures, the Jewish scriptures, the Christian scriptures. Show me where it says believing men and believing women in so many verses. You have good news on this day. Good news on this day. You will have rivers, gardens under which rivers flow. That is the great reward. The hypocrites, what would they say? Give us some of your light. Because on the Yom Qiyamah, what did the Prophet say about people that go in the dark to the masjid at Fajr and at Isha, the two difficult prayers on the Munafiqun? He said, Bashirhum, the Nuratam Yom Qiyamah. Give them good news that they will have complete light on the Day of Judgment. Complete light on the Day of Judgment. Because on the Day of Judgment, there are people in darkness and there are people in light. And the light will guide them. It will guide them to the Sirat. It will guide them on the Sirat. It will take them into paradise. That light, yasa'a bayna aydihim wa bi'aymanihim. That light that's in front of them and, and surrounding them on their right because they're ashab al yameen But the munafiqun, will see the believers with their light and they'll say, give us some of your light. And what do the believers say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَضُرِبَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِسُورِ اللَّهُ بَابٌ مِنْ قِبْرُهُمْ The bab has rahmah from one side. It has rahmah and then it has adab. So there's a sword that separates the believers from the munafiqun, and they will see each other. And that door separates, the, the sword separates them, that wall separates them. And they will want what the believers have. And the believers will say, and they will, and they will say, weren't we with you? Weren't we with you? The munafiqun that prayed with us, that fasted with us, that did all these things with the believers, but their hearts were diseased. What is the believer? What do they say? Five things. Five things. This is what they tell the munafiqun. They tell them five things. You Put yourselves in fitna. You put yourselves in fitna. This is what Shaitan says to them in hell. I called you and you answered. Don't blame me. Blame yourselves. The fitna is not from outside. It's from inside. When they said, La taftina ya Rasulullah. Oh, I, I can't go to the Byzantines, because those blonde-haired women, they're a fitna for me. That's what one of the munafiqun said to the Prophet when, when he asked him, he said, please, don't, don't, don't give me fitna, I can't take those blonde-haired women. And, the, and the Allah says, didn't he fall into fitna? Al fitna fi nafsika. When I was making tawaf, one of the mutawa, they're gone now, because they got rid of all these guys. But I was making tawaf with my wife, and for us, the sunnah is no niqab, the malikis, no niqab. And, and this man, he starts screaming at my wife, ghatti wajhe, ghatti wajhe, anta fitna, anti fitna. And she's like, she got really scared, she said, what's he saying? I said, he's saying you're beautiful. And 
ليه؟ اي سيد الفتنه في قلبك يا اخي كل المؤمنين غضوا من ابصارهم tell the believing men to lower their eyes I said the fitness is in your own heart leave people alone فتنتم انفسكم وتربصتم and you're waiting for problems that's one interpretation تربصا is a beautiful word تربصا الدوائر they wait for calamities to happen or تربصا الفرص they wait for opportunities they sit around waiting these are the hypocrites I'll make tawbah later on. I'll make tawbah. Next year I'll, pr- I'll do the tahajjud. This year I won't do it. Next year I'll do the tarawih. This year I won't do it. They just wait. Wartabtum. And you had doubts in your hearts. You had doubts in your hearts. Wagharratkum al amani. And all your vain hopes. All your vain hopes. All these vain hopes. The Prophet ﷺ said, that the, the, the ajiz, and in a riwayah, the ahmaq, the idiot, the fool, the stupid one, that he's the one that atba'a nafsu hawaha wa tamanna ala Allah al-amani. He said he, he lets his nafs do whatever it likes, the ego, just do whatever you want, do what thou wilt. And then he just has vain hopes about it. Say, yukharu lana. One of the signs at the end of time, he said the believers would say, oh, Allah is going to forgive us. What guarantee do you have? What guarantee do you have? If you're upright, bushara lakum. But if you're not upright, you should be wary. Because this is the Quran. Make tawbah. So this is what Allah says. And then he says, وَغَرَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغَرُورِ The gharur is shaitan, nafs, hawa, dunya. These are the gharur. One of them, he said uh, that he, uh, that ubtidina bi arba'in tarmini, four things they strike me, four things. The nubli, an qawsin the tawtiri, it's, it, they're, they're arrows that come from a, a strong bow, and they hit me. Iblisu, wa dunya, wa nafsi, wa warak. Ya Rabbi, ala al-khalasi qadiru. This Iblis, dunya, this world, your own ego, and other people. These are the tribulations of life, alhamdulillah. So may Allah bless this uh, fast. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you people of Tawbah, make us all people of Tawbah. We need Tawbah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, make you people of the Quran. The Prophet ﷺ gave us this book, and he complained about us. He said, my people have left this book. And then Allah says that like that, he makes enemies. So if you abandon the book of, of Allah, you're an enemy of our Prophet ﷺ. We have to study the book. That if you read this book of Allah, if you study it with one another, you have groups that come together to read the book, to think about it, to study it, he said you will get sakina from Allah. Alhamdulillah, Allah has given us a beautiful day now. It was a little cold at the beginning, but alhamdulillah, Allah's blessing for this ummah. Jazakumullah khairan, aqulu qawri hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. ورسائل المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه غفور رحيم الحمد لله الله أكبر الحمد لله الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله الله أكبر ولله الحمد الحمد لله We are going through, as a species, big problems on this planet. You know, we're, we have a, a country that has nuclear weapons threatening to use them. Nobody has really been thinking about this, but it's a very real uh, possibility. Unless Allah yukufu anna ba'sahum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevent madmen from, uh, from doing mad things. We are now in a state of inflation with people who know about economics just look at the, what they call the PPI the producer's price index not the CPI that's what they tell you in Time magazine but look at the PPI things are 150-200% inflation now for producers of products this is all what, what Allah calls 
bunk, ma'isha bunka, constricted life. It's from ingratitude. That's the only cause of it. It's just ingratitude. People today are, they're just ungrateful. We've had a cornucopia of goods. Everything just come, you go to the store, it's all there. Now they have all these delays, all these difficulties. Everybody's talking about, oh, the supply chain. Yeah, well, welcome to ingratitude. Everybody complains. It's amazing. I'm even complaining about the people who complain. It's just a, a, we're on a planet of whiners. It's just amazing. We need to stop whining and just really feel gratitude, just gratitude for being alive. Ibn Atayla, the great master from Egypt, the faqih, Maliki faqih, and the great mystic, he said, ni'matani, ni'matani. That no two blessings, ma haraja minhuma. No believer is without them. Wada minhuma, and no created thing, and every created thing is in desperate need of them. Ni'matu ijad wa ni'matu imdad. The blessing of being itself, of existing, just to exist, to participate in existence, is one. Of, this is such a blessing. To be alive, to be alive. There's a man who jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge. He was depressed. And he decided he was going to kill himself. So he went to the Golden Gate Bridge. He said if anybody asked him how he's doing sincerely, he said he wouldn't do it. He got to the end of the line on the bus. He's crying. And the bus driver says, Hey, buddy, this is it. You got to get off. He didn't say, are you okay? Like the guy's literally crying. He didn't say, are you okay? He said, you got to get off. So he said, that's it. So he walks. He goes to the Golden Gate Bridge. And he takes the jump. He's one of the rare survivors of that bridge. Before they put those nets up, about 350 people jumped off of it every year. Many, many people lost their life. He survived the jump because he broke all these bones in his body. It's like hitting cement, but he survived. And the reason he survived is a seal came and held him up. He couldn't swim because his bones were all broken. A seal came and held him up. And when the lifeguard got there, they said, brother, you have no idea how lucky you are. Because they're always taking people out who are dead. They couldn't believe he survived. You know what he said? The moment he jumped, the first thought that came into his mind, this is a mistake. And I guarantee you, every human being that has ever committed suicide, as the blood was leaving his body, if he slit his throat, as the bullet was penetrating his brain, if he pulled the trigger, that was his thought. This is a mistake. And the man who knew that best was Dostoevsky because he was put in front of a firing squad. And right before they pulled the trigger, they said, ready, aim. The Tsar played a trick on these revolutionaries, and the man came and said, no, 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 stop. They've been pardoned. They're only sentenced to a gulag in Siberia. But Dostoevsky said at that moment, he realized, I want to live because of the gift of existence. No matter how difficult it is, no matter how hard it is, no matter how depressed you are, depression is one of the kafarats. Imam al-Ghazali said, there are sins in this world, nothing will remove them except depression. No matter how difficult your life is, be grateful for the gift of existence. Never throw it back in the face of your creator. This is a great gift. And then, be grateful for the perfection that he created you in, the beauty of your bodies, the beauty of your faces. Honor them, honor your face. The Arabs call it mal waj. Don't expand the water of your face in sinfulness. Adorn it with gratitude and with righteous acts. And you will be beautiful even if your face should be ugly. Allah will make it beautiful and he'll make people attracted to it because of your obedience to him. And then na'matul imdad the blessing of in death, that Allah sustains us, that he gives us our food and our sustenance and clothes, and he gives us the blessings of our families. 
despite all the trials and tribulations. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم عيدكم مبارك اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا وملائنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم تقبل منا الصلاة والصيام وحشنا في زمرة خير الأنام اللهم لك الحمد اللهم الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا ما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله لقد جاءت رسل ربنا بالحق اللهم آمنا بهم وبرسول الله اللهم جعلنا يا أرحم الراحمين من عتقاء هذا الشهر May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all free of the fire May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your community bless our women protect them protect our children May Allah make us good caretakers for them May Allah remove any domestic violence May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us honor our women May our women inshallah honor their men May our children obey us. May our children stay in the faith. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate and increase all of you. Bless our community. Bless the MCC. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all the people that volunteer and work, the people that work to make this event uh, possible. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect this country and protect uh, the people in it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide its leadership and make them do the right things, the things that are beneficial to the population and for the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, remove the tyranny from our lands. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, every, every prisoner that's unjustly in prison, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him solace and relief in his heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, give him freedom or her freedom. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all the women in domestic violence, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free them from their pharaonic husbands. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah make us people lighthouses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to guide other people, first and foremost ourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of us. May He bless our scholars and may He bless our guides and may He bless our imams and may He keep them protected and protect our masajid. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. Jazakum Allah khairan. Aqulu qawli hadu. Astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum. Wa salli lahum ala Sayyidu Muhammad. Salatan tunjina biha min jami'a al-ahwari wa rafat. Wa taqdeelana biha jami'a al-hajat. Wa tutahhiruna biha min jami'a al-sayyat. Wa tarfa'na bi andaka ala darajat. Wa tukalluguna biha aqsar ghayat min jami'a al-khayrat fi al-hayati wa ba'd al-mamat. Wa salli lahum ala Sayyidu Muhammad. Wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Aidikum mubarak. Jazakum Allah khairan. Assalamu alaykum.